Hi everyone, my name is Pranamya Srikanth, and today I'll be telling you the short story called Fish Cheeks by Amy Tan. Amy Tan is a Chinese-American writer and novelist. Around 1985, she started writing a story called Rules of the Game, which started off her first novel called The Joy Luck Club. Um, the Joy Luck Club actually received the Los Angeles Times Book Award and was translated into 25 different languages. She grew very famous after the Joy Luck Club and continued writing many different novels and short stories. Fish Cheeks is one of them. <clears throat> I fell in love with the minister's son the winter I turned 14. He was not Chinese, but as white as Mary in the manger. For Christmas, I prayed for this blonde hair boy, Robert, and a slim new American nose. When I found out that my parents had invited the minister's family over for Christmas Eve dinner, I cried. What would Robert think of our shabby Christmas Chinese dinner? What would he think of our noisy Chinese relatives who lacked proper American manners? What terrible disappointment would he feel upon not seeing a roasted turkey and sweet potatoes, but Chinese food? On Christmas Eve, I saw my mother had outdone herself in creating a strange menu. She was pulling black veins out of the backs of fleshy prawns. The kitchen was littered with appalling mounds of raw food. A slimy rock cod with bulging eyes that pleaded not to be thrown in a pan of hot oil. Tofu, which looked like stacked wedges of rubbery white sponges. A bowl soaking dried fungus back to life. A plate of squid, their backs crisscrossed with knife markings so they resembled bike tires. And then they arrived the minister's family, and all my relatives in a clamor of doorbells and rumpled Christmas packages. Robert grunted hello, and I pretended he was not worthy of existence. Dinner threw me deeper in despair. My relatives licked the ends of their chopsticks and reached across the table, dipping them into the dozen or so plates of foods. Robert and his family waited patiently for platters to be passed to them. My relatives murmured with pleasure when my mom bought out the whole steamed fish. Robert scrimanced. Then my father poked his chopsticks just below the fish eye and plucked out the soft meat. Amy, your favorite, he said, offering me the tender fish cheek. I wanted to disappear. At the end of the meal, my father leaned back and belched loudly, thanking my mother for her fine cooking. It's a polite Chinese custom to show you are satisfied, explained my father to our astonished guests. Robert was looking down at his plate with a reddened face. The minister managed to muster up a quiet burp. I was stunned into silence for the rest of the night. After everyone had gone, my mother said to me, You want to be same as American girls on the outside? She handed me an early gift. It was a mini skirt in beige tweed, but inside you must always be Chinese. You must be proud you are different. Your only shame is to have shame. And even though I didn't agree with her then, I knew she understood how much I had suffered during the evening's dinner. It wasn't until many years later, long after I'd gotten over my crush on Robert, that I was able to fully appreciate her lesson and the true purpose behind our particular menu. For Christmas Eve that year, she had chosen all my favorite foods. So that was Fish Cheeks by Amy Tan. In the story, you can see, even though it's a very short story, that's indicating that you shouldn't feel shame about your culture. Amy's mother prepares peculiar things for her Chinese Christmas dinner, like fleshy prawns, rock cod, tofu, dried fungus, and squid. But Amy shouldn't feel shame about that. After many years later, when Amy is a successful writer, Amy realizes that her mother prepared all of her favorite things and she should have been grateful for that. Again, even though Fish Cheeks is a sh very short story, it symbolizes how you shouldn't feel shame about your culture. In fact, the only shame you should feel about it is feeling shame about your culture. I hope you enjoyed the story.
Bye.